A lot of folks ask about laundry in the 18th century. It's a fascinating topic. We are here at Martin Station in Western Virginia, and I've got Maggie Delaney. She is doing an entire grand wash. Let's go hear about the entire step-by-step -step process. Hello, good day to you, and how are you today? Do you need some laundry done? I have a, I've got a big wash set up, the grand wash we call it, and I can do a fine job for you, and I charge a fair price. Uh, you don't know how you do it. Well, let me, let me tell you how Maggie does it. Now, before I do, let me tell you, it may not be the same as everything you've ever heard because all of us do it different here in the colonies, no matter where you are. There's some that skip some places and there's some that do it differently. But this is how Maggie does it. And so you can see the skill of what I do today and see if it's worth your coin. The first thing I'm gonna do, you see, is I would start the night before. And I've already taken all the clothing that I have today. And I've done a, what you would have called a pre-soak. And that means that I'm going to put either in lye or I'm going to put some soap on it. And I'm gonna put it over here in my kettle in the hot water. And I'm going to let it sit in this warm water overnight. And hopefully it'll take the stains out. The kettle that I've got, and this is a copper, and it's called the copper uh, because it was always used for laundry. Uh, we don't want to do it in iron because it'll take the color of the clothes. It reacts with uh, the soap that I use sometimes. And uh, so I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to put it in with either a little bag of nice fine ashes uh, so that as it lays in the water, it'll leach out the lye and bleach the clothes. Or if I don't have enough of that, or if I don't want to use that, more commonly, I'm gonna use this bleach. You've got bleach like this, right? No? Well, you need to get some of this because it's very fine. This is what we call chamber lye. Uh, it's stale urine. We collect it out of the chamber pots you see in the morning and put it outside. And when it sits out for about two weeks, it's gonna turn into a very strong ammonia. And it does a grand job in here getting the stains out. The more I can do here, the less I have to do down in my tubs. So I'm gonna be working really hard to try to get all of the stains, all of the dirt out of it on this side. If it's a shirt or something of a man's, I might take the soap even the night before and put a little bit around the wrists and around the neck because you know that's where they get the dirtiest, the men do. And uh, let it sit in the warm water overnight before I bring it to a boil the next morning. So. Here I've been working on these now. They've been in the water overnight and I brought the water up to a slow boil this morning. And they've been in there now for about, oh, I guess maybe not quite an hour, 45 minutes or so. So once these clothes have done the seeping, I'm gonna bring it over here and put it in my first tub, which as you see has already got soap whipped up in it. The lye soap is what we were using. Now I know this is what we end up with having to use if we have to buy our soap, if I don't have time to make any. But if I make my own, instead I'll make a soft soap like this. And the difference between the two is something very simple, salt. You see, you gotta have salt to make it bar up like that. And I don't always want salt in my, in my wash. So I do a soft soap like this, and that way I can whisk it up really easy. And it makes it much easier to be able to work into the cloth if I need to do that. And it also makes it easier to work into the fiber, but, but with my hands. Now, I keep a board here. This is my battle board, or my battle as it's called sometimes. And that's for me to be able to do my work on. Uh, and it's also for me to be able to work the soapy water out that I've gotten into there. Now you see, I can squeeze that out just like I'm kneading bread. And I want that soapy water to keep coming through and working its way through because as that soapy water is inside this piece of cloth, it's going to pick up the dirt that's in there. And when I push it out, the soap and the water will take it out the other side and hopefully clean it. But if it's a thicker piece, or if I have more dirt in it than what I'm comfortable with at this point, then I can also put it up on the board and do a little bit of beating with it. Now this is my battle door. In fact, these are all battle doors. These are more from the ladies in England, and that's where I got this one from. Uh, and this was more from a lady from the colder countries, the Scandinavian countries. And both of them do the same thing though, and that's to be able to strike the cloth and to drive that soapy water out at a much sharper blow or a much quicker pace. 
uh, to take the, the bigger dirt and the harder dirt out that way. Now, since I'm doing a shirt, I still have buttons on the sleeves and upon the neck, so I need to be very, very careful. So I'm gonna keep it curled like this with those buttons curled underneath, and I'll take my lighter battle door and do it along that way so that I don't break the buttons. You can see the difference in how fast the water comes out by the sharp strikes that I could do. Now one thing I'm not going to do is take this and rub it on this board because this is linen and it will tear if I rub it on a rough board like this. So I have to be very, very careful. The washing I'm going to do is all going to be in the soaking and in the rubbing, little bit of rubbing that I do, and even that I have to be gentle, and for the pushing the water out like this. I'm going to put a lot more stock in trying to get the dirt out before I get to this point though. If nothing else, I get tired of the beating all day, you know. Now that I've done all the washing that I can do, there's one more thing that I need to do before I can put everything away and put it out and get it drying. And that's, a, I'm gonna to need to rinse it just a bit. And then if it's a white thing, if it's something that I'm really trying to make nice, particularly a man's shirt or a lady's cap or a cloth that she wears about her neck, I'm gonna bring it to this pan next. And in here, there's gonna be two things. One of them is gonna be a little bit of blue coloring and the other, a little bit of starch because I'm going to be doing my ironing tomorrow and I want to make sure that they dry as white and clean as they can be and as stiff as they can be to make it easier for them to run the iron over, you see. Now, at right now, up until, oh, just not very long ago, the only way that we could get bluing was like this. This is called smalt. And this is actually ground up cobalt blue glass, ground very, very finely. And uh, this is how you would scatter in the water in order, in order to make things look a little bit whiter. By the time we get to the time where we are right now, they've learned how to take indigo and do the same thing with it. But there's a big difference between the two. The better is the smalt because the indigo is a dye. And so when you put it on your white things, it actually is going to put a blue dye on it. It takes it a little longer to come out where the smalt is not a dye and it will not do that to your clothes. It's a little easier to control. Now, the starch that we're using right now mainly is made from wheat bran, and that takes a long process. And we get it here in the colonies in little bricks about that big. And it is, comes from Poland, the very best does, you see. And that already has the blue smalt mixed in it. So you can just take the little brick and shave it into the warm water here, and you have both the bluing and the starch at the same time. But if I don't have any of the wheat bran or I don't have any of the Polish starch to be able to use, then I can use also potatoes. I can ground them up into water and let them seep and then take the chunks out and use that for a good medium sized starch. I have to make sure and thin it down enough that it doesn't clot into the clothes. You know, we don't want chunks of potatoes in our clothes as we wear it. Um, I can also use rice and the, some of the gentlemen like that better, especially the military men, because the rice water when it is iron, the rice starch, makes things very shiny and they like things to stand out that way. So I might save that if I have some in order to be able to do that. And again, I'm using just the water, the rice water. Now, if I have a ladies thing that's very fine and I don't want anything quite that heavy in the starching, I can always use this. This is called isinglass. This comes from the air bladders of the sturgeon fish in the big rivers. And I can put this in hot water and melt it down and it makes a very thin type of starch, like a sizing. The ladies of the kitchen are using this also to thicken puddings and gravies, so I have to fight them for it, you know. This will cost me a little bit. If I want something thick though and I have nothing else that I can turn to, I can always go to the stables. I've got a friend that's a stable boy and he saves me these. These are the horse's hoof trimmings that they've trimmed off. And I can wash them really well. And when I need a little extra heavy starch, I can put these in water and boil them down. And they make a really thick type of sticky kind of starch because they are gelatin. And they'll do a really fine job, particularly on lace, because it will stiffen them very, very hard as long as I tack the lace down and let it dry that way. So that's what I'll be able to use. But if I can get the Poland starch, that's the one that's the done the most. 
So I'm going to take my white thing once it's clean and rinsed and put it through this water. And then I'm going to take it out here. Come on, I show you. Now that I have everything washed as much as I can do, it's time for something else to happen. And that's the drying and also some more bleaching. Now my dark things, I don't care to bleach out. I just need them dry. And so I put them up on a line. We have lines that have been here since about 1600. They first were made of horsehair braided together, but now we have linen ones and even hemp ones. And I'm gonna hang my darks up right here and let the air take care of them before I take them down and move them on into the ironing. But the whites, they go someplace else. Well, now there we are. And I know you're asking yourself, now Maggie, after you've done all that work, why would you put your white things down on that green grass just to get them dirty all over again? Ah, but there's a reason, you see. Because what have I done but to try to make the white things white, correct? Well, that's what I'm doing here also. You see, I'm putting them out here on the green grass, not only for the sun to dry them, but it for it also to bleach it. But not only is the sun bleaching it, but the grass itself is gonna be bleaching it from the bottom. You see, the grass is breathing out a little bit of something that we breathe in. And when it does that, it's gonna bleach out these clothes from the bottom up, just a wee bit, but it helps the sun. And between the two of them and the wetness, it'll help them get whiter and whiter. And the longer that I leave them out here, the better off they'll be. In fact, if they're not white enough, I can actually take them in tonight and wet them again in the morning and throw them out one more time. And that, as many days as I can leave them, will do that. And if I'm gonna do that, then I may wait and do my starching and bluing afterwards. So now that's just a little taste of how I do the laundry. There's a great deal more to it than that, but I'm not giving all my secrets away. So would you care to bring your laundry to me? I told you I do a fair job and charge a fair price and I've got plenty of time today. But whether you do, or whether you don't, I've got to get back to work because there's always something to do. Thank you, Maggie, for all this great information on what it takes to do laundry. I wish I could do laundry, but I can't. It looks like it's way too much work. It is, sorry. It was hard on a woman. If you're interested in more information about the laundress, who that person was, check out this video.